Okay. I uh, used the uh, engraving engraver, flat edge, and outlined the areas that I wanted to uh, carve or relief, 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 relief it. Anyway, so here's. You just do this. You cut both ends of it out. And then you just keep working it back and forth all the way down. And when you get all the way down to that, to about the, the depth you want, this is a, uh, a wonderful tool I made. Oh, I got about 10 or 15 that I love. This is one of them. This is a relief cutter. And it's got a sharp edge and uh, a rounded sharp nose so that you can do all kinds of uh, different cuts into uh, wax. So this would have been real choppy. So I use the uh, cutting edge here like this. You notice how long these tools are. They got a little grip on them right here. Of course I make these tools. But <laughs> so you know I, I may have known so they work. but. Anyway, you just come in here like like this, and I think you can probably see it relieving all the, the rough edges on your on your uh, underlay cut here. And you can reduce the amount by the amount of pressure you're using, or you can take quite a bit. Now when you get to the edge, you can either do it like this. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so when you come to the edge, you just you go the opposite direction. And a little more here. Now I decided that uh, the uh, my little PK tool right here. I didn't I didn't like the way I put the texture on on the other side of the ring over here. So I got out my trusty uh, wax machine and uh, these sell for about sixty bucks I think. And it takes a long time to get them, but you get uh, two two uh, two carvers. For 60 bucks and two sets. Look, well, can't go wrong with that. And it's temperature controlled. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. There's the machine. Okay. So our inlay wax, our dental inlay wax. You just put a little dab on your uh, tool here and start making your little limbs or vines or whatever you call the little fellows. And uh, I'm going to make this one come Right out there like that. And you just keep going till you get all the divines or limbs you want. And uh, then I uh, use this relief tool. Where did I put that? I use this fella right here. The same thing. It's a little relief tool. And I uh, go ahead and uh, flatten the tops of the, of the limbs so they're nice and flat. So and if I want to do some gold relief on them, I can. That's the whole idea of why I did that. So next thing I'm going to do is finish putting all the little limbs in it and uh, then I'll show you how I do the polishing because your wax really needs to be polished as good as you can get it uh, otherwise it when the uh, silver cast goes into the mold it uh, swirls and it can cause problems porosity and you, in silver you never know what you're going to get anyway so, but we'll uh, give it a try here in a little while and 
show you how I polish it. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're at the next stage in the, the final stage. We're going to uh, finish the uh, polishing and uh, smoothing the ring up so that we have a uh, smooth uh, surface all the way around as much as we can. And uh, by doing that, we're ensuring ourselves a better, smoother casting. Uh, silver does not like to cast, cast well, not a, not a big, basically because of the inert uh, atmosphere. We can't take away all of the uh, oxygen like ma big, huge manufacturers can. So we tend to get more porosity in the uh, in the silver. They make a new style of silver, starlight silver, and uh, I use that exclusively in everything, making my wire, wire selling our wire, because it, it has a tarnish-free uh, mixture to it. So anyway, I'm going to show you quickly. This is the uh, preferred cleaner that I like to use for polishing. It's actually lighter fluid. But this is the brand I prefer, and I don't know why, because I got used to it, I guess. It works really well. So, the thing is, is you can't just saturate your uh, wax mounting, because if you do, it, it'll melt into all your crevices, and it'll round, round up corners that you don't want rounded. So, you can't run this on uh, machined surfaces, like where I put the 45s, or the I think 30, I'm sorry. I put a 30, 30 degree bevel on the edges of the ring. That just has to stay left alone. Uh, I will probably clean them up and redress them uh, after I get the uh, casting done, if it casts well. So, so that's the next stage of what we're going to do. And you just take a Q-tip and drop a little dab on there like that. Careful, it is flammable. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put a little inside of here and I'm just going to rub it. But you can't, like I said, you can't put much in there. Otherwise it'll round out everything you've got in there and it won't, it won't cast sharp and straight. Okay, we're going to You can see the wax coming off of the mount. And this takes almost all the scratches out. It leaves the top of the of the ring surface really smooth, which is kind of what we want. It also takes out all the little straight ends of the the wax. seen how, how that's doing. Do a little more. We're just uh, kind of rolling the the uh, swab around, and it slowly removes all the scratches and nicks. And this is a comfort ring, so we don't want to work off the the center too too much. So we want to keep this a con k or convex. And it just takes a little time. They make chemicals that uh, do the same thing. I don't know. I, I haven't used them for years. Uh, they're really s strong, uh, vapor-wise. So, and this 
lighter fluid, while it doesn't work quite as fast, it works efficiently. And uh, it, we got a little bit here to take out. Now we've got her polished. So the next thing we got to do is sprue it up and get it ready for casting. Then we'll mix our plaster, cast it, come back, clean it up, and hopefully on Monday she'll have a ring. If not, <laughs> I'm in trouble. So this is a uh, flask right here. Let's see if we can screw it out. All right, this is the flask, like this. Oops. And uh, we'll screw the uh, sprue the wax mounting on here at an angle slightly, like that. And then we'll uh, put it on the machine, vacuum it out, and we'll see what we got. Now on these, I always put a little bit of uh, Vaseline on them, and uh, actually what I use is uh, that uh, that uh, grease that uh, I sell for clocks. Uh, really expensive, I don't recommend it because there's cheaper stuff, but uh, a barrel of that is just absolutely cost prohibitive anymore, and uh, so I... I still use a little bit of it, and I'll show you how I do this. Now these uh, these come with your kits, your oil kits that I sell, and uh, I also sell these in uh, two different uh, sizes. You can buy just the grease in a large, uh, I think this is 20 milliliters, this is 5 or 10, and then I've got another one, 15. So, alright, I'll show you what I do. Here we are, just a little bit of that, and I put it around the whole thing. Now, why am I doing that? Well, the reason we put this on there because I don't want plaster to stick to my sprue base. It's a real real stinker to get it out of there. So you grease the thing down. And then when your plaster sets in here and you pull the, the your flask off, uh, this stays clean and you don't have to fight cleaning it up later on. That's why I do it. I won't sell this one by the way. I'll, I keep it. I, I had a whole jar around here somewhere and I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, there it is right here. Well, I knew I had one. So, All right. Now you know how the sprue base is done. Next thing we're going to do is sprue up the uh, mounting, the wax mount, and get it ready for casting. <clears throat> okay. Now, if you were going to do multiple uh, castings off of one sprue, then you would use a sprue base like this one here which I do when we're doing 20 or 30 pieces at a time but uh, I haven't done that for years <laughs> you know I'll bet oh we pretty much closed down uh, about 10 years ago and then uh, just did little stuff you know just to keep keep going sold a lot of uh, equipment off I wish I hadn't done that now but anyway you would go ahead and sprue it on here like that uh, let's see if we can go back out a little bit Uh, you'd uh, put your base on like that, and then you'd have sprue bars coming up all the way up the the, the sides of it, and you could probably put a set, of, a set of five different rolls going up. So you can cast a lot of rings at one shot if uh, if you have the equipment to do it. Uh, I don't. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this base, this this sprue bar. And uh, because this is silver, I want plenty of uh, silver flowing, and I uh, hope that it 
cast right. <laughs> Five. Just go ahead and make sure we got a good joint. Okay, yeah, I think you can see. I'm sorry if I'm getting in the way of it. This is a wonderful little machine. Like I said, they're about sixty, sixty-five dollars. No other I have. I think we have like three or four of them left. And I don't know whether I want to sell them or not uh, because of the fact that uh, we're going to open the uh, classrooms up in the back room uh, later on this 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 summer or first part of fall. And uh, I'm hoping to make that live stream so you can see all kinds of stuff that we're really doing. I'm really excited about that, and uh, okay, so now we've got our sprue base put on the uh, ring, and uh, next thing we're going to do, I think I'm going to crank this up a little higher, yeah, we're at 325. I'm going to let this sit on here for a little bit. Now you want about a half inch uh, from the top of your uh, of your sprue here. You want about a half inch down so that your uh, casting doesn't blow when you uh, run it. You can either use a centrifugal caster or a vacuum caster. Uh, I generally use vacuum because I'm more comfortable with it and probably will this time but I have both machines. so. I don't want this quite that high. I want this at an angle. And there we are. And we'll just go around it. Last thing you want to do when you're putting these in a vacuum cast machine <laughs> is have that sprue that broke loose and you don't know it. And you cast it and all you got is a big pile of nothing. <laughs> I've had that happen. But when I teach this, I make sure that the students whack or grease these uh, flasks because if you don't do that, it's just a mess to try and clean them up. And at one time, we had several employees, and uh, let me tell you, it, it saved a lot of time by doing that. just a little and there you have it we are ready to cast that mounting next thing I'll do is plaster it up and uh, vacuum it out and we'll be ready to go so next next step okay these are the uh, two carvings for the uh, wedding sets that I made and uh, I went ahead and uh, sprued them for you and I went to the back uh, lab building and casted these they came out really well now she's holding the pearls but the only thing I've got to do now is, is take the four hands and 
gently push them into the pearl. But you have to be careful because a pearl scratches that nacre scratches so fast that uh, so I'll be uh, extra gentle. I have a couple tricks I might use, but these I gotta go out tomorrow morning. So I finally got it done. Now here is the uh, wax carving that I showed you on the. Uh, whoops. Get it back in here. Okay, this is the wax carving that I made for uh, her uh, husband to be wedding band. And it's, I think, it, maybe we turn that. You can see it better this way without that light blaring into it. Sterling silver, it's got a uh, comfort fit design on the, on the inside shank. And then on these, I'll, I'll just roll it around for you. These are kind of like roots, tree roots going all the way around it on both sides. And they've been uh, antiqued, so you can see on the other side. Wouldn't be for me, but you know what? She loves it. So that's all that counts. And I'm sure he'll enjoy it too. So happy marriage, guys. <laughs> so that's about it for the for the uh video on the on the rings. So we'll wrap this video up and see if we can get it up on the uh YouTube and uh, move on to our next uh, project. As always, I do appreciate uh, watching and learning along with uh, me. And uh, so this is the Bench Jeweler saying so long tonight.